I am not going to sell you something or deliver a lecture on economics. But I best address the elephant in the room, and that is I am wearing one of my lovely suits today. I've been out with a partner this morning, um, and whenever we go out in the wild, I will always wear a suit because we provide elegant solutions to technical problems. A little bit of marketing for you there. But today I want to discuss estimated time in Halo PSA because we don't talk about it a lot. To be honest, it's not something hot off the press, the stuff I think we should really build in Halo. Um, and also, we don't see it utilized a lot. Um, and that's because it kind of has a few pitfalls in the way you have to build it in. And I'm going to show you what they are today. However, we have provided an elegant solution around this. Kind of. Um, it's, it's a solution. Elegant. Yeah. Maybe. You be the judge of that one. But let me show you what the hell I'm talking about. So let's jump into Halo PSA. So... If you've seen this before or not, you can have this little box on the ticket down here which says estimated time. And the idea of this field is, is we can have a report that says Connor has worked four hours today. Connor worked on 10 tickets and the estimated total time for those 10 tickets was, I don't know, two and a half hours. And you can look at them and go, why has Connor worked more time than we think he should have worked? Or the flip, you know, why has Connor only logged an hour worth of tickets today when we think he should have spent three hours fixing the problem? Why is Connor rushing these tickets or not doing them properly? Or, which is going to be the most obvious answer, why is our estimate value so far off? So, how do we do this first of all before we get into the nitty gritty of what we've done to make this a little bit more elegant? Well, on a ticket type, so config tickets and ticket types, you can have a defaults tab. You do have a defaults tab. And further down this defaults tab, you will see a field called default estimate value. And what this is saying is whenever we make a ticket of this type, put this time against the field estimate time on the ticket. Has a mouthful, won't it? However, as you can highlight here, there's a problem. What if this is a change request ticket? Well, you can default that as well. Yeah, but what if it's a change request for something quick? Oh, well, the estimate value is going to be the same. What if it's a change request to onboard a new user? Oh, well, that's going to be different. How do we control that? And the problem is, is you can't do it with the ticket rules, as far as I'm aware, and you're kind of locked into this. So we've used it in the past for like onboarding and offboarding, where we have a unique ticket type and we say an onboarding should take one hour. But when we start talking about incidents and change requests or problems, we don't really ever leverage this. I've set a default here just to demonstrate my point today. But when you do that, if you do add this estimate value, remember to add in the field to the ticket so it's visible on the ticket of estimated time. This is just a field when you search for it, you'll find it. You can go one step further though with this, and this is about another tongue twister, I can already imagine it. You can also set, and Q, well, bear with me here, agent ticket deals modify access roles. So what you can say is, the only people who are allowed to update and modify this ticket are people with the role of whatever you set. So in my build, I've said you must have the role administrator if you want to edit or change this field, which is fine. So when I go to a ticket, I don't have the role administrator. Therefore, I can't update the estimated time on the ticket. Fantastic. However, you'll see this says 30 minutes when originally it said 15 on the ticket time. So how does that work, Connor? Well, what we've done is um, I'm just going to make a ticket here, test ticket, and I'm going to submit it. What we've said is on triage, when we select a category, depending on the category, update the estimated time. So currently you'll see it says 15 minutes. When I click folder access, change the work type to be, I don't know, IT support and press save, it will still say 15 minutes. If you wait 15, 20 seconds or refresh the ticket, you will now see that as updated to be 30 minutes. So you can start using your categories to drive the estimated time on the tickets, giving you some more data to report on. So the main question is, is how have we done this? Well, let's take you through the fundamentals first of all. Now, this is the bit I don't love. However, I can't think of a better way of achieving it. AI potentially down the line. But what we've done is we've made a custom object, a custom table, so config custom objects, custom tables. We made one called estimated time. And we've made a category in here, or a field which pulls all of our built-in categories, which we can select. So let's say we have a hardware desk phone of Cisco, and we can type in here, this should always take us no more than two minutes. 
bear with me. And then we can save it. And what's good about this is what we then leverage in our run book in a minute is we pull the category and we pull the time and then we pass that back to the ticket. Now, you can always export all of your categories and then re-import the data into this table. So if you don't have to want to go through manually every single category and add it in manually, you can do a dump to Excel, fill out all of the fields and estimated time, pop it back in and away you go. And the nice thing about that is if you do want to modify a few of them down the line, let's say you set 15 minutes as a minimum, you want to go, nope, 10 minutes should be the new minimum. You can update it in bulk and re-import it. Alternatively, you can edit them in this table here and say, actually, disable accounts. They're taking us an hour and 30 minutes as opposed to an hour. Let's update that time now. So future tickets are going to be an hour and 30 estimated as opposed to an hour. This won't go back and change the other ticket types, which I think is a positive thing here. But this will mean moving forward, the estimate time will now be one hour and 30 minutes. So the question is, how have we tied this to the ticket? Well, as you know, by now we use uh, run books for a bunch of wacky and wild things. And this is no exception. This will be documented below in the description of this video, by the way. So look underneath here, it will be fully written out. Um, you will have the JSON for this, so you'll be able to import this into your Halo build. You'll have to edit a few things to get it working, but that will all be written out by the beautiful lobby from our side. Um, if it's wrong, then um, <laughs> it's his fault, not mine. So what we're saying here is when we triage a ticket and don't get caught up on the event, this could be anything you want. When we triage the ticket, run this run book. And that's because on triage, we're defining the category. And then the flow chart, and again, this will be documented. Um, we basically say run this report or run this SQL report in Halo. And I'll construct it or deconstruct it a little bit. What we're saying is taking the, the hour from the estimated time on that table, take the minutes from the estimated time on that table. And you'll see that from estimated time being our custom table. Um, where the category is equal to um, seeded, um, where category name is selected from category two. So in English, um, pull the ID of the category on the ticket. Now, what's good about that is, is it means if you do update your category name, let's say you call it Cisco and go, actually, we don't just want Cisco, let's put it as VoIP. You could update the name of it and this will still run correctly. So we like to buy into IDs rather than names because names can change. And what we do once we grab that, we're saying, you know, grab the time, so the, the hour and the minutes, and then output that or store that in a variable called estimated time. Then what we do in part two of this is simply update the ticket with the estimated time. It's quite simple. Again, I won't go through all the nitty gritty of how you configure all this now. That'll be in the written guide if you're not familiar with how to do this. But essentially, that's that. We have a ticket that we can triage. Let's make one more together to go through it. A ticket that we can triage. When we select a category, so if I just type in here, uh, hardware, desk phone, Cisco, I can save it as IT support. That will then trigger the automation because I have triaged the ticket and I didn't press F5 and did it itself. And that will then update this field to be estimated time. What's good about that is you could then add that column in here. So we can edit columns, service desk view, show, I don't know, estimated time like this, save. And then you could filter by estimated time and go, right, we've got 100 tickets in the desk. Let's start with all the quick wins just to cl you know clear the queue, get the backlog down pass the higher level ones to our more experienced engineers. And again, work as a team, get a nice dynamic to now bring your desk down to a manageable volume. As I mentioned at the start, you can also build reports around this. So we can say, you know, look at Connor's um, time. And again, I, this, this report won't fully highlight this. It's not in here, but um, if I just show you um, this one, uh, is this the one? Uh, no, let me go to the one that says uh, here. This one, we could say that Connor this month or let's do this week. Connor this week is supposed to have logged or targets 40 hours. He's had no holiday or any sickness. He's logged four hours worth of work. However, we could add in here based on estimated time on tickets, he should have worked 
three hours or six hours based on the tickets he's got. Again, this report isn't quite ready yet for the human consumption. It's still in my test lab. But the idea is, is we start looking at agent utilization now. We can leverage our utilization against profitability. And we're just starting to build a nice data warehouse of information that we can leverage as and when we need. And that's it. We're just over 10 minutes. But the idea being is, is we can use a custom table to store all of our categories and we can set a time against it. We can have a run book that updates the ticket with the time, which we can later on leverage in many ways, but mainly reporting or our service desk view to help us better manage our desk. The next time you see me, I will probably wear in pyjamas as opposed to this lovely three piece suit. But as always, I appreciate you stopping by. We have just reached 1000 subscribers and that is all down to literally you. So thank you so much. It really motivates me to get these videos out. I hope this helps someone out there. Any questions, put them in the comments. We are quite busy, but I do try and get through them. And as always, I've been Connor Fagan. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye for now.